And welcome to the jungle. Welcome everyone to Jungle Rugby TV. In this very special episode, we're going to focus on the Hong Kong International Sevens. It was a great week, finishing with this wonderful tournament. So let's not delay, let's get straight to it. Let's connect Asian Rugby. Ever since we started filming Asian Rugby tournaments way back in 2014, we've noticed members of the Hong Kong Rugby community participating as well. From Laos to India, these Hong Kong folk have been pouring their talents, time and finances into Asian Rugby. Which begs the question, what is it about Hong Kong Rugby that leads to such generosity? What is happening there? So I have decided to go to Hong Kong for the very first time to find out for myself. And there is no better time to take this journey than Rugby Week 2018, the week leading up to the legendary Hong Kong International Sevens. The last 10 days, we've been staying here in Hong Kong, exploring all the rugby action in Rugby Week. Here is what we found. It all started the previous weekend with the Sai Kong Stingrays All-Girls Tournament. Started up to 12 years ago with a small group of girls who just wanted to try and play more rugby. And it's grown from a tournament then of just 110, 120 girls to nearly 800 girls now. This vibrant gathering featured a combination of local Hong Kong sides and teams from around the world. We've experienced Hong Kong and now we're playing our favourite sport together against, you know, teams from around the world. So it's actually one of the best experiences I've had and I'm going to remember it for a long time. As I chat to those involved, I note a deep appreciation for the Hong Kong rugby scene and the upcoming sevens. It's just the start. We've now got the, uh, the uh, Kowloon Fest with rugby, then all rounded up by the Hong Kong sevens tournament. It's Tuesday, and before today, it had never crossed my mind that the city of Hong Kong would have poverty issues. But here we were, witnessing two of rugby's most recognisable brands support four local charities through Mission Possible. Well, here today we've got a, uh, a rugby coaching session organised by uh, AIG in support of Mission Possible, which is a charity that supports other charities in Hong Kong. Um, those like corporations like AIG to get their money to the most effective and cost-efficient charities. How encouraging to see international rugby giving back to the Hong Kong community and to also hear the excitement of a young New Zealander ready to don the black jersey for the very first time this weekend. My name's Amanaki Nicole, I'm from uh, New Zealand. Yeah, so I'll be uh, putting on the black jersey for the first time, so uh, yeah, it's a dream come true. If that wasn't good enough, another treat was waiting for us, less than a stone's throw away. 25 minutes ago we were over with the All Blacks, we come over the hill, and who do we see? Here's the USA practicing for the weekend. I mean it's always a dream to come to Hong Kong um, and, and to play sevens in Hong Kong. It's, it's what it's all about. It's the Blue Ribbon event. Uh, we're confident. I think we always perform well here. It's one of our favorite tournaments as a team. Oh, we're feeling pretty good. I mean, uh, I can't call it yet, though. We still have some more training and, and, and wrinkles to get out. But I think it just the atmosphere, the build-up. Just the whole entire stadium is really loud and really crazy. I just think it adds to the whole kind of flavor to the week. I think we're uh, feeling real confident and just excited to get out on the field. It's midweek and it is high time for some social rugby. And I think that's the great thing about the Kowloon Rugby Fest. The tagline is probably the most social tournament in the world and have to say it absolutely is. Kowloon Rugby Fest's spirit of fun can only be matched by its incredible generosity as charities from all over the world gathered to be empowered. So the first time I'm really experiencing the whole Sevens atmosphere, to see everyone coming from all over the world, to see the growth of the game in Asia, it's literally a world game. It's the day after and it's time for the Hong Kong Football Club to take it all to the very next level. 32 international teams gathered to play the highest standard of social rugby I have had the privilege to witness. First tournament was played in 1986, so this is the 32nd tournament and over the years it's involved um, future internationals, 
And I just think year on year, it just gets stronger and stronger and stronger. More than just a prelude to the sevens, the Hong Kong Football Club's Rugby Tens has become an event in its very own right. Yeah, I'm obviously really, really pleased, chuffed a bit. I think the quality uh, towards the business end of the tournament was incredible. You know, the, the boys in the final knock lumps out of one another, and yet, you know, the respect that they earned and showed one another afterwards, uh, you know, is testament to our great game. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that wraps it up here at the Hong Kong Tens. We're now about to go into the final phase, the final chapter, as we head towards one of the biggest rugby tournaments in the history of frickin' rugby, the Hong Kong Sevens. As we make our way across to Hong Kong Island, it is yet another chance to admire this vibrant and colourful city, which has become one of the economic powerhouses of the world. And as we make our way across to the stadium, we take time out to enjoy a wee bit of fun. Well, this is just a bit of a gathering for some of our social members and a few playing members, guys coming into town, uh, just getting together, having a few beers uh, before heading over to the Hong Kong Sevens. Premiership Rugby Club, uh, based in Hong Kong. We run five rugby teams, eight netball teams, two lacrosse teams, basketball, rugby league, touch rugby. Uh, so we have around 250 playing members. We entered a team in the uh, GFI Hong Kong Tens uh, on Wednesday and Thursdays, the Scottish Exiles, and we managed to win the bowl yesterday, uh, which is why we're probably looking a little bit worse for wear. This is just the, the sort of pinnacle uh, of the you know, the, the rugby year, I guess, for us. Uh, so everything builds up towards the sevens and we get to have nice fancy lunches like this. And who's the speaker today? Today's Ian Milne, uh, ex-Scotland and British Lions prop. They had a really funny moment before. The MC welcomed everyone into the room and then reminded them that this was a room full of Scotsmen. So they all had to go out the back and make sure they paid up first. <laughs> So we've only been going for eight years. I guess the goal for us is to, to win the league and win some sort of silverware and just continue to develop rugby to have local Chinese guys representing Hong Kong. In fact, one of our, uh, one of our players, Kane Buko, is running up for Hong Kong this afternoon in the seven, so we'll all be there supporting him. Came downtown for lunch today on Friday and we spent our time with the Hong Kong Scholarship with these guys just eating and sharing and talking and, and having a laugh. And it's really becoming obvious to me now, having been here now for over a week and I'm about to go to the, the Sevens there at the stadium just over the hill, that this really is where the world comes to meet. Okay, sports fans, we've made it. The Hong Kong International Sevens. We've got our media pass. It's about time we got to this. Follow me. Our media pass gave us access to several places. This is the players' interview area, pitch side. It gave us access to players and coaches. This is the central media centre where we clocked in and out every day. This however was our favourite hangout, perched halfway up the western stand. And since we had all the credentials of journalists, we thought we could have a bit of a laugh playing the part. Ok ladies and gentlemen, here's the first Asian team we've seen come out here this afternoon because that's why I'm here. Because Hong Kong are playing Papua New Guinea. Japan versus Chile. That's this. That's the sides on paper right there. Hong Kong's out there right now, taking on Zimbabwe. <laughs> Start off very tightly at nil all, but once they kick off, I reckon that'll change. And let's go! So that's a bit of a kick in the balls. Um, this following Japan's sense of win of some other thing. So the Chinese women qualify. Hey, what do you reckon? Uh, South Korea, they, uh, they got totally smacked, 45 nil less said about that, the better. Heartbreak for the home crowd, heartbreak for the Hong Kong boys, that's the way rugby goes. Here you reckon it's great too. So 
So by far the most colourful parts of the stadium are the two ends, the north and south end. Particularly when Fiji score like they just did there. Your first time, switch team do you follow? Fiji! Fiji, huh? Well, this particular game, Fiji, then uh, we'll see where it goes on from there. I think Fiji's going to win? Yes, they'll win it! Yes, definitely! Fiji will win for the cup! I'm quite confident that we, will, we might take the cup back again this year. The Fijians had every right to be confident. In the pool stages, they racked up a score against New Zealand that no one in their wildest dreams could have imagined. 50 points to 7. To be fair, like other sides that weekend, the Kiwis were under strength due to the Commonwealth Games. But the Islanders, they would have none of it. That's what happens when you bring your second team against our best team. You know, you've got to be the best, you've got to play the best. And you gotta, if you don't, you don't put your best side out against Fiji, you're going to get punished. Another team I followed keenly was the United States. After our positive encounter with them, earlier in the week. Sadly, they copped the wrath of the wounded Kiwis, going down to them 35-7 to and missing out on cup qualification. Well, it, it always comes down to who controls the ball, makes least amount of mistakes and the contact error. We were a bit loose at times, they got the rubber to the green on a couple of occasions and that's the way it goes really, that's seven rugby. The Hong Kong Sevens, an event so spectacular it literally pours out onto the street. All right, just outside the stadium here is a great little village that the HSBC have set up, and uh, gives people a chance to wander in and have a look on the screen and watch the uh, the rugby from outside. The grounds a little bit more quieter, a little bit more sedate, uh, really nice. Back in the stadium, and it's finals time. The ultimate prize, the cup belongs to Fiji of course, overcoming a gallant Kenya 24-12. Incredibly, this was the 18th time Fiji has achieved this feat. Japan gave the Asian rugby supporters something to cheer about, scoring against the Germans after the siren. This dramatic win gave them qualification for the World Series. For everyone else, the open air party continues. So what can we, the rest of the Asian rugby community, take away from this week in Hong Kong? We cannot possibly replicate the economic strength that is Hong Kong, nor the depth of its expat community. But these are not the real factors that drive Hong Kong rugby. The heartbeat of Hong Kong rugby is the spirit of rugby. And the good news for us is that this can be replicated anywhere. From Bangkok to Burma, India to the Philippines, the values of rugby, friendship, equality, generosity, the physical contest, and having a bloody great time can empower any Asian rugby community, regardless of culture, gender or age. But if you are based in Asia and you're struggling to get your rugby scene off the ground, then contact a Hong Kong rugby mate. In my experience, it's quite likely that they're going to give you a helping hand. You see, this is the spirit of rugby that drives Hong Kong and Asian rugby into an exciting future. <laughs>